But if we're looking for a bit more distance, this would be the first place to start, the first place to look. Something that I see day in, day out, and one of the biggest misconceptions about the backswing, in particular the takeaway, is that it needs to be done slow and sometimes low and slow in an attempt to try and control the swing, control the club face, control the path, the arc, to set everything up somehow miraculously for that change of direction which happens when you speed up and influences how you strike the ball. Now I'm not saying that the backswing doesn't influence the downswing, of course it does, but do you really think about how you take your hand back when you're throwing a ball or take the foot back when you're kicking a ball? or the racket when you're playing tennis. Generally, it's very instinctive because your mind is actually on the task at hand, probably not on the mechanics that are happening in the moment. So we're looking at action and reaction. So what action are you making and what's the subsequent reaction? And this is happening all throughout the golf swing. It's happening throughout the body, it's happening throughout the swing, in every moment. But we've got to let it take care of itself. And to do that, we need to operate at a functional, speed we need the body to be responding we need the body to be reacting otherwise this game which is actually a reaction sport becomes the opposite and then we have this kind of conflict going on trying to make something that we perceive to be stationary to be dynamic when actually all along it is dynamic and it is reactionary we've just got to have our mind in the right place and we've got to allow our body to perform so think about throwing a ball you'd be utilizing the body's natural joint actions. You wouldn't be thinking about controlling the joints or thinking about how you're moving all these segments in space and how they all contribute to each other in the form of a sequence. We'd actually just sequence naturally. All these body parts, all these joints work naturally to create the movement for the shot or the throw that you're picturing. We've got to let that happen. We've got to use the body's natural capability. We've got to use its elastic capability, its stretch reflex essentially the power mechanism in the body the elasticity in the system is going to create those extremely powerful joint actions to create the movement you want without even thinking about it what we need is we need to let the body act naturally to do that we need speed and to do that we need momentum and where does that come from well the outside reacts to the inside so the movement of your core influences the movement of the arms and the club and what's moving the core is the lower body and that's using the ground that's using these ground reaction forces to generate this momentum which the arms and club are going to react to so we're creating a sequence by using the ground and that's going to move the club for you you don't need to think about this because if you think about throwing think about hitting you're going to move the lower body first you're going to start to move in a way that's going to set up the reaction so the action is the lower body movement the reaction is the upper body. The hands are reacting to the body and the hands are holding the club. So in essence, the golf club is reacting to what the body is doing. Hitting a ball with a baseball bat or a tennis racket, we wouldn't even think twice. We certainly wouldn't be trying to control the action, control the hand path, control the face in a way that in our mind would make it more mechanically advantageous to swing down. Imagine trying to throw a ball with a slow backswing. I'd even recommend you try it. If you try and take a ball back really slow, when are you going to actually start to speed the thing up? And how do we actually generate any speed? We also introduce distortion into the system. We actually lose control. For example, if you were to write your signature, not only do we write the signature differently every time, although it looks similar, so there's a general pattern we recognise, just like your golf swing, there's going to be a general pattern you recognise, but also if you try to slow your signature down to try and copy it precisely, you'll find that if you go really slow, it starts to shake and you get distortion, it affects coordination. So suddenly perception action is seriously affected. There's a certain momentum to how you walk. If you try to slow how you walk down, it's going to seriously affect the mechanics, it's going to affect coordination, it's going to affect rhythm, timing, tempo. It's also going to be a high mental load because you're going to have to be thinking about your action whilst executing the action. We've got to let the body perform naturally. So momentum is the key and it's momentum that we're going to tap into to start the swing. So what we need is one of these, a tennis ball chopped in half. And this is going to allow you to recognise how you're utilizing the ground. It's gonna create some really important feedback. 
So we're going to put it on the floor. We're going to take our stance and then we're going to move the right foot away from the ball. So I'd say probably bring the right foot half a step in. And all we're going to do is allow ourselves to fall into that tennis ball. We don't need the club at first. Just let your body drop and squash the ball. So we're just using our body weight. We're using our body mass. And this is ultimately what is behind driving the momentum in the swing, using our body mass to swing the club mass. Not thinking about how the club mass is moving, which then interferes with how we're moving our body mass. So what's acting, what's reacting? The body's acting, the club's reacting. But if we think about acting with the club, where is this moving in space and doing it at a speed where we think we can control it, the body's not actually performing like it would in the golf swing. The muscle function is very different. This is going to be performing at speed. This is going to be tapping into the elastic properties of the muscles, the joint actions. We're going to start to load into the ground. We're going to drop and then we're going to stand up to rotate. So we shift to stand up. But as we stand up, we rotate. And it's the extension that's gonna speed up the rotations, create more angular momentum, and it's this that's gonna swing the club back. It's the same thing you do if you were throwing a ball. It's gonna stretch the muscles, that's gonna load these joints ready for recoil. And this is how you're gonna tap into your natural power without having to put the effort in. But it's also how you're gonna control your swing because a free swinging weight in space that is less influenced by us is more consistent. It's like a conquer on a piece of string. We're actually just making a very small movement and allowing the forces we're creating to swing that conquer around very smoothly on a very consistent arc. So a free swinging swing weight in space is a consistent arc. So now we can use the club and make a little counter movement. We can swish it forward. And as we do that, we're gonna step into the ball. But remember, not by extension, not standing onto the ball, by falling and standing up to rotate and swish the club back. So we're actually letting the golf club react to us. Notice how late the arms and club react. I'm already standing up and rotating and the club's still over here. It's gonna swish back at probably a much faster speed than you're used to swinging back with. And so a snap starts to occur here. It's a very gentle snap. We're not creating the same kind of swish we do in the downswing, but nevertheless, we're letting the momentum accumulate through the system. And that is ultimately what's swinging the club head. Now, when we step away from the tennis ball, we can try the same thing. And when we stand to the golf ball, we can introduce a little counter movement. So you might see the pros make a little forward press or a little shuffle or a waggle or a wiggle, a little shuffle of the feet, a little movement forward. That's interaction with the ground, the club's moving too, the whole system is engaged, very active. But what it's doing, it's priming the system ready. We're creating a little counter move, i.e. creating momentum in this direction, which the body can respond to and accelerate in the opposite. It's like throwing a ball and stepping forward to go back. The body is ready and engaged. But to do that, we need that little counter movement. And that's the forward press. So we have a waggle, paddle the feet, and then forward press, and that triggers the whole thing. This is the green light, this is the go, and we're off. But we're not going straight up, we're gonna feel the load and unload. Just watch the long drive guys, they are not swinging back slowly. Now I'm not suggesting we're all trying to be long drive champions, but if we're looking for a bit more distance, this would be the first place to start, the first place to look. Introduce that momentum from the off, and get the body reacting instinctively, starting to coil, utilize all its movement capability to sequence that club in the most efficient way. And we're starting the sequence from the off. In fact, we're starting the sequence before the club even moves back because the body's moved forward, the handles move forward, the club head's not even swung yet, yet the swing is underway. You're already off and running. Don't assume it's just when the club head moves that the swing starts. There's a lot of movement before the swing starts. You're actually engaged in the swing way before the club head moves and this just all becomes reactionary. And then the body's ready to change direction. And it's gonna do that naturally, just like throwing the ball. You're not thinking about the change of direction, you're thinking about where you're going. And the body increases the stretch throughout all these joints and fires you back. And we set this system up. It might feel like you're out of control a little bit, 
but you're not. What you're actually doing is learning to swing in control by losing control and swing this club with freedom going back. It's quite a liberating feeling just to swing the club back and let it go and then let it react. You're letting the body take control. And this is the start of you tapping into your natural swing mechanics because you're doing it from the get-go and then you're letting the body respond. So have a few swings, play a few shots, allowing yourself to utilize this momentum, swing the club back with freedom and see what happens. So we're paddling the feet, waggling the club, the body's engaged and we're ready to make the counter move to let the body react naturally. And before you know it, the ball's soaring, little draw, but more importantly, I let the swing go. It was a blur. We set it off in motion and we let it react and it's over in the blink of an eye and that's how it should be. What's happened there when I throw the ball? We don't know, I don't know. It's kind of a blur, it's a flash. It's in the blink of an eye, it's gone and that's how the body should be reacting. But the ball does what you wanted it to do. So somehow, miraculously, the body organised itself and you allowed it to organise itself because you were operating at that functional speed and the way you're going to find that is by utilising those ground reaction forces and letting them transfer through the core. So recognising how the body's responding to these forces you're creating and how the club reacts and it's the reaction that's the key. And let's make our swing react instead of thinking about it, slowing it down and making life more difficult. Ha 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 ha!